Let's talk Moldavite. That's today's topic on exploring possibilities. Hi, I'm your host, Cheryl Sitz, welcoming you back for another episode. Hopefully you're joining me on my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Cheryl Sitz. If you want to listen to this in audio, wherever you're picking it up, that's great. But you'll have to come to the YouTube so that you can see all the Moldavite that we're going to be talking about. And who am I talking to? Today's guest is none other than Robert Simmons. Robert Simmons has been working with crystals and stones for over 35 years. He's the co-founder of Heaven and Earth, a company that offers gems and jewelry creations for self-healing and spiritual and emotional development. He's written several books. Those include The Book of Stones, Stones of the New Consciousness, The Alchemy of Stones, and here it is, today's topic, the book of Moldavite, Starboard and Stone of Transformation. And he joins me right now from New Zealand. I love that place. Hi, Robert. Hi, Cheryl. It's nice to be with you. Oh, it's so great having you on the show. I'm, I'm delighted that you created time for this. We had a few misses, but we finally connected and I'm excited. Great. So where should we jump in? I, I found your entire book fascinating. I suppose the best place to start for anyone who's new to all of this would be what is Moldavite and how did it become such an important part of your life? That's one of my favorite things to answer. Um, and uh, I'll hold up a piece of Moldavite so that I can also let people see what it is. This is a raw piece of Moldavite. Now, what Moldavite is, it's a meteoric gemstone. It was formed in the collision of a very large meteorite with the earth, only one time in the history of the earth and only in one place. So this happened 14.8 million years ago in what is now uh, the Bohemian Plateau of the Czech Republic. Um, but the meteorite itself, it's interesting, actually landed in Germany. And here's what happened. There was a meteorite coming in from the west uh, at an incredible speed. It crossed the Atlantic Ocean in five seconds. That's how fast it went across the um, ocean as it was coming in. Um, it, because it came in at this low angle from the West, it collided in Germany uh, where there is now a crater called the Race Crater. And that crater was formed by this huge one kilometer in diameter meteorite hitting. So, that was such a powerful event. It's been estimated it was more powerful than the explosion of all the atom bombs in the world. Um, and it actually was intense enough in heat to vaporize both the meteorite itself and the rock when it hit. So what then occurred was vaporized rock that was a mixture of meteorite and earthly stone shot up into the stratosphere went further to the east because of the momentum of the original collision. And as it was up in the stratosphere, this gasified rock cooled enough to turn into liquid and it fell in a molten rain of green glassy substance that is what Moldavite is. And that substance landed in the Czech Republic, primarily in the Bohemian Plateau and also some of it in Moravia. So, 250 to 400 kilometers from the original crater site is where the Moldavite landed. So it's this rain from the heavens and it's this alchemical combination of heaven and earth, of the heavenly stone of the meteorite and the earthly rock that it fused with. Um, and just one other thing I'll say about this dramatic event is the, the explosion, the shock wave from this collision was so powerful that it would have been heard in New Zealand on the other side of the planet if, it, if people had been here to hear it. Um, and it, 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 I mean, many other things of this dramatic amount of power and energy that was discharged in an instant at Moldavite's creation. So now when you take the perspective I take, spiritual perspective and say, what is this a metaphor of? You know, this to me is a metaphor of the joining of heaven and earth and of alchemical transformation and of rapid transformation. 
All of these things happen to the earthly and, and heavenly substances. And it's interesting because that echoes into what happens to people who bring Moldavite into their life. Yes, and that's very powerful. Thank you. You did that so succinctly. You've probably only told that story, what, 100,000 times in your life now? <laughs> <laughs> it's a little different every time I tell it. And I've actually, in the writing of the book, I learned more about the origin of Moldavite than I had before because it's there's some recent information. It wasn't settled before that this uh, crater in Germany was where it landed um, and other things like that. So even though I've told the story many times, I'm always learning. You've been learning about this for years. I'm also fascinated with how your trajectory of working with gemstones and jewelry became so focused around Moldavite. It's almost like Moldavite said, oh, there he is. Yep, he's the one. He's going to help us get out there. <laughs> Well, you know, that's, that is almost exactly the way it was, um, at least subjectively for me. And if you want, I'll go into that. Yes, please. So, so I was just a jewelry designer uh, and I was, I was interested in metaphysical things, but didn't have a connection between my work and my interest. And I was driving to Cape Cod one year, 1984, and I was thinking about jewelry designs because I wanted to do something unusual. I was tired of the same old, same old. And as I was driving, an image came into my mind of a gold meteorite in the shape of a, a gold pendant in the shape of a comet with a me real meteorite in the head. And I thought, nobody's ever done that before. Nobody's put meteorites in jewelry. And at that time, it's true, they hadn't. Um, and Halley's Comet was coming soon another year and a half. So I thought, I'll make this for Haley's Comet. I'll make a commemorative pendant and I'll sell a lot of them and I'll become rich. This was my motivation. This is the carrot that the universe puts in front of you. <laughs> so I was so excited by this idea, Cheryl, that uh, I missed my turn off. I was supposed to go to one town then see a jewelry store. I missed the turn. I was 40 miles down the road before I realized it. And, but I happened to be almost at the doorstep of a close friend of mine who had done a project uh, with an astrology pendant through one of the credit card companies. And he'd done very well. So I thought, oh, I'll go to his house. I'll tell him this idea. So I went to do that. He was home. Uh, I told him my idea. He liked it. And he said, everything about this is good except the metal meteorite in the head. Those are ugly. You should use a moldavite. And I said, what's that? And he said, I, I read about it. Let me just go see if I can find the article. In a few minutes, he came out of his study with a magazine from 1958, where he, there was an article about Moldavite as a gem from the heavens and as, as something with spiritual qualities. So even back in the 50s, this author had known that there was something uh, spiritually awake and active about this stone. And he tried to share that with people even then. And aside from the fact how amazing it was that my friend still had a magazine from 1958 <laughs> and remembered it. So I read this article and I started getting that destiny feeling like, like my hair on the back of my neck stood up. And I thought, this is, I don't know what that means, but it's important for me in my life to follow this. So I saw where the man lived when he wrote this article in 58 and I thought, well, uh, maybe he's still alive. I'll call and I'll see if I can get a phone number. So I did that. There was information operators in those days. There were. And the woman gave me uh, a phone number. I called it up and this old man's voice answers the phone. And I said, hello, I'm Robert Simmons. I just read your article about Moldavite. And there's this long pause. And this man finally says, you just read my article? <laughs> So we got on very well. We talked on the phone about Moldavite for four hours wow. and I didn't want to quit and he didn't want to quit. And we just kept going and he told me so much. Um, and he even sent me the first samples of Moldavite that I ever had. But from that moment on, my life went into high gear. And that is one of the very common effects of Moldavite on people 
It seems to stimulate a rapid spiritual evolution and often a transformation of the person. So, you know, from that day on, especially when I actually got Moldavite in my hands, that began in my life. And thank you for sharing that story and other stories like that throughout the book. I have to confess that Moldavite's been in my life for a few years now. And because of all the other things that I've done for my own spiritual evolution, I really don't think I ever gave it the credit that it deserved for being at the heart of a lot of my own evolution. And as I was reading the book, it's true, the book has the energy of Moldavite in it. And I got it out and I started wearing it while I was reading it again. And I was moving through this journey and it was talking to me saying, I've been here all this time. I've been helping you. I've been helping you. You haven't recognized that, but I've been helping you. So I think that's neat that you helped me give credit to this magical I want to call it a stone or a crystal, but it's a tectite. I'm going to give it its due. <laughs> it's just really powerful. And, and it's taken your life all over the place, hasn't it? Just you, you more focus, do you more focus on Moldavite now? I know you do the booths and the educational books and things. Has that become the focus for you? Well, um, Moldavite has always been central in my uh, life among the stones because Moldavite is the stone that woke me up. I wasn't awake yet when I had that experience talking to the man who had written about it. Um, and But I will say that in my own life, this arrival of Moldavite, as I said, created an acceleration. And as some examples of that, because this is one thing, there are many letters in the back of my book. I've included letters from people who have experienced Moldavite. And the common, most common theme is this acceleration and transformation. So in my case, um, in the first few months I had the Moldavite in my life, um, the, the marriage that I was in that was on the rocks had finally went ahead and dissolved, which was needed. Um, I stopped eating meat spontaneously. I stopped using alcohol. Um, I started um, paying more attention to spirituality and most importantly, uh, in that time, I met my wife. Now, my wife, Kathy, uh, was already very far along on the spiritual path and always had been. And when I met her, I started feeling differently about, about everything. Um, and she also was the first one to hold Moldavite and say to me, this stuff is a lot more important than you realize, Robert. You've got your comet project but it's really about something much bigger. Um, and so she insisted, because once I met her, you know, it was like, okay, I'm going that way. Even if I am falling in love with a crazy person who believes that stones have energy, I'm gonna do that. And, you know, then as we were together, we also decided to open a crystal store, which we did the day after we were married. That was the original heaven and earth. And during that interim time and after we first opened the store, um, she insisted that I meditate with Moldavite every morning. And so I did. And it was when one of those meditations that I had a, one of the most powerful experiences of my life, which is what uh, awakened me to then everything that came after. So I can tell that story too, if you want. I don't want to stop you from telling any of these stories. So please do. <laughs> They're all good. Well, this one I think is important again because it gives people a taste of what Moldavite can be like. Um, I used to, I was, I was, at first, because I couldn't feel anything from stones and I had to take it on faith that Kathy did and that other people did, uh, even though we had a shop. Um, I wanted, I thought more is better. So I meditated in the mornings with my hands in two buckets of Moldavite. <laughs> wow. And I was just like, because I had them, because I had tried to do this Haley's Comet project and I'd bought a whole bunch of Moldavite. I mortgaged everything to do it. Uh, and the Comet project was canceled. So I was left with all this Moldavite, which turned out to be super popular when we opened our shop. But in any case, I meditated every day with it, hands in the buckets. And after a while, I gave up on that because it didn't seem to make a difference and I still wasn't feeling anything. So I just had my one piece, that piece, uh, this piece. This is the piece I've had now for 36 and a half years. Very nice. Um, and it's, um, 
I held that in the meditations every day and nothing happened, nothing happened, nothing happened as far as I could tell for some months. And there was one day when I thought, I'm so bored with nothing happening. Uh, I think I'll imagine that something's happening. And so what I imagined was that I would go up out of my body. So I did try to do that. I could do it. I looked down on my body. I could see it. Now, I thought I was just imagining it. But then I thought, well, I think I'll see what it's like above the roof. So I went above the house. I could do that. And then I was like looking around the neighborhood. Uh, and then after that, it took off on its own. And I was going higher and higher and out into space. Now, it's in the context of meditation. I didn't forget that I had a body. But I wasn't really, my attention was in this experience. So it took me on its own. It took me out into the stars. And among the stars, I looked around and I could see this one golden star that was attracting me. So I thought, I want to go to that. And in that, in that theater of imagination, I was able to do that. And I found myself then near this golden star. And it was surrounded and being orbited by a million other little golden stars that were like, like echoes or replicas or children of this huge one. And each one had a thin thread of gold connecting it to the star. And I was, and they were all orbiting in this beautiful holy procession. And I was in that place and I thought, what do I look like here? So I looked to my I look turn my attention down to myself and there where my heart would be was another of those golden stars and i had my own thread connecting me to the big one and then a voice came into my meditation and said the light you seek without is identical to the light within you and in that moment back in the room in my hand there was this buzz 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 of energy and the energy shot up my arm into my heart. My heart then and just opened like a big flower and it was white light in the shape of a flower and beautiful emotional ecstasy opened with that. And then for, as it developed, the light went up and down my whole chakra column and all the chakras one by one opened up. And then the light was pouring up and down through me and the ecstatic nature of that experience is indescribable but it's one of the most powerful experiences of my life and it was so powerful that upstairs getting ready for work Kathy could feel something going on so she came down to look and see and she looked at me across the room and said Robert you're full of light and I said I know and in that moment, that, and then she came and sat with me as this experience just poured through me. And um, finally, we started talking a little bit about it. And it took about an hour and a half for that uh, quality of intensity to come down enough that I was ready to go in and open our shop. But when I did that with her, for the first time ever, every single stone in the store, I could feel its energy. So I went from zero to all of them in a single ex experience. And I spent the whole day on the floor, picking up one stone of the, that we had after another and checking them out. Um, and since that time, that, that capacity has never turned off. And that's what's allowed me then to write all my books, to tune into other stones um, and to teach about them. So, Moldavite is always central because it opened up that capacity for me. And was that the was that you were just intuitively guided to go to your imagination for access to all of that? Well, you know, I was, yeah. And Kathy has since told me um, her her iconic statement is, "Imagination is the doorway to spiritual experience." Yes, and I love that saying it because it isn't the experience it's the way you get to the door and when you enter the experience unfolds yes so it's a way of pointing ourselves with our intention and in fact i sense in recent times in my other book the alchemy of stones i write about three human powers that i call 
attention, intention, and imagination, which were the alchemist key tools, the spiritual alchemist. And so, you know, I didn't know what I was doing in that day with the Moldavite, but what I was doing was setting an intention, using my imagination and keeping my attention on what was happening. Yes. And that took me to the doorway through which the whole thing happened. That felt so important for you to share because there's still people awakening every day. And so that message never gets old because there's always new ears for it to land on that are looking to hear that. So thank you so much for sharing that. And, and you know, I'll say, Cheryl, one thing people uh, do is doubt their experience. That's very, very common. And uh, often they'll say to me, did this really happen or was it just my imagination? And the thing that the, is implicit in that, that we need to throw away is the word just because it denigrates the imagination, which is an incredible power of creativity that we have. And, you know, if we recognize that we're creating things that are actually becoming real as we invest ourselves in them, then imagination becomes a power and not something that's just thrown away as fantasy. Yes, 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 yes. It's our divine superpower, right? It's our spark of divinity. Thank you for that. And it's how we it's how we and the divinity find each other. Yes. Ooh, I like that. Gee, you should write some books. You're pretty good at that. <laughs> One of the things that's come up a lot now, because Moldavite since early days has really taken off. So you've been doing a fabulous job of speaking for Moldavite because now it's everywhere. And so much so that there is counterfeit Moldavite everywhere too. People have jumped into that and you touch on it in your book a little bit, but I thought you might just speak a little bit to what people should watch for if they're wanting to get their hands on some and experience this. Yeah, you know, I will. And there's, there's a lot of, there were many waves of popularity that Moldavite expanded into over the 35, 36 years I've been working with it. The most recent one happened during COVID and it was, uh, Maybe because people were at home and they were buying things online. Maybe it's because people were looking for some spiritual depth because of their outer world was so stressful. But whatever the reason, there was a sudden blossoming of interest on Moldavite in that COVID time, especially 2021. And, um, and it also got popular on TikTok during that time. I happened, I, when I finished, the, when I was getting close to finishing the book, I looked up how many views of Moldavite videos there had been on TikTok and it was 540 million. Wow. So that's a lot. And at that time, the, all these new people wanted Moldavite for its ability to help them transform. And so everything I had for sale in heaven and earth was gone. Everything, all the other people I knew who sold Moldavite had was gone and it created a shortage. Um, which, you know, and the prices went up and all that sort of thing. But it also caught the attention of people who would counterfeit. Yes. And that's the answer to your question. Um, a great many of these counterfeits came out of China. And, you know, in the mineral business, I can just say that a lot of the uh, fakes have come from there. You know, they're very enterprising people who know how to make things over there who don't mind making fakes. So that, that happened, and a lot of it was on sale online through some of the bigger websites. You know, I, I, I've seen them on Amazon and on Wish and on Etsy, all these different places right. had people selling counterfeits. Now, how do you, how do you, what's the caution? Um, first of all, if you see a Moldavite that's this big and they want $15 for it, <laughs> I'll guarantee you it's fake. Um, you know, these are in the hundreds, if not more. I mean, they are in the, in the high hundreds and even thousands. Right. Um, and so a lot of the fake Moldavite that got sold in that time was that was they sold because they made it $20. Um, but all they were buying was bottle glass. And, you know, it's unfortunate. But so the thing to do if you want to avoid it is go to a business in the same country that you're in and go to one that will guarantee it uh, and give you written guarantee if you ask for it 
um, and preferably business that's been around some like so many years. So I'm recommending myself, but I'm also recommending other suppliers who fit that uh, description right. um, because it's you don't get something for nothing with, and it's very. I hate to think of all the people who bought fakes and don't don't understand why they don't feel any energy. Right. You know. So, but it is it is a function of the demand for moldavite that this even happened. Um, so, you know, there's both sides. Yes, thank you for that. And the uh, the real thing comes out of the Czech Republic, right? That's that's where the origin of all of it is that we would yes. end up with. Yeah, it, it only fell there. There's been no other stone like Moldavite that's landed anywhere else on the earth at any other time. Um, and with some of the other counterfeiting type things that are happening is people are using the name Moldavite on stones that are not uh, there's you know they, they uh, have Colombian moldavite that's actually just obsidian um, they but they call it that there's something called that people call white moldavite that is just a calcite and then there are there are colored glasses of yellow red blue and so forth that are being called moldavite online by counterfeiters um, because you know and if you don't know anything about it you see that name and you see a pretty thing and you think, oh, that's, I'll take one of that kind. Right. But it's a mistake. It's got to be green. It's got to be green and it's got to be from the Czech Republic. Yeah, there was even an African one, that supposed African one, that was, again, the most transparent. I mean, I even saw a piece once that had the selling as African Moldavite that still had the imprint from the bottle they broke it to make. Oh, jeez. Uh, <laughs> Wow. Yeah, I could actually catch that one probably on my own. <laughs> you even go into in the book and you touched on it briefly, but you even go into different stones and crystals that work well with Moldavite and how those play together when you when you work with them. So that was really yeah. interesting and how to do body work and even that you can take a photograph of someone if you have smaller stones and and do the the st the gemstone crystal grids on the photograph of the body. You want to speak a little bit about that? Yeah, certainly. Um, I mean, given 35 years to do it in and my enthusiastic interest, I've done everything you can think of with Moldavite <laughs> probably. I mean, I've made Moldavite essences that you can drink or spray on yourself, and as well as uh, doing these layouts and making uh, crystal tools and things like that. But the layout is really interesting. It's one of my favorite new things that I've developed. And doing it on a photograph in particular is very uh, cool, I think, because it opens up lots of possibilities. So I call these photograph layouts, and you don't just necessarily use Moldavites on them although I put Moldavite in almost all of them that I do. Um, I call them photonic layouts, both because um, of the fact you're using a photograph and also it's an echo of the term radionics, which is an old term from the 50s. Uh, and that's really when this, this potential was discovered. Um, people that were, uh, I mean, there's a whole history of radionics, but it was discovered that you can basically use what in uh, magical practice they call a witness. So a lock of someone's hair, a fingernail, or a photograph of them to take the place of the person. And you treat the witness, or in this case, the photograph, um, and it will affect the individual. Um, so this was shown to be true and real. And it's interesting, in the history of radionics, they found they could do it uh, not only to people, but also to fields, and they would use tiny amounts of pesticides on a photograph of a field and it would affect and kill the insects that were infesting the field. Um, and they found that also they could do the same thing with fertilizers and make um, a garden plot grow better um, if they put a little bit of the fertilizer on a photograph of the garden bed. So when I was reading those things, and that was suppressed as you can imagine by the industries that were affected when, they, when this was coming out in the 50s and 60s, the pesticide and fertilizer industries went to the uh, uh, Food and Drug Administration and had them clamp down on this um, for obvious reasons. Right. So, so, you know, 
I took this and I went, well, this should work on people too. And uh, I tried this out with a friend and I did a, I got a picture of her with her whole body um, um, lying on a yoga mat. And I did the layout on her picture just as if I were doing a stone body layout on her physical self. Well, she was, she's 10 miles away from me. She felt it as soon as I started doing it. And she was profoundly affected by it for the whole time I had it on there, which lasted um, uh, about two, 10 days. And so there's another thing about these photonic layouts that is interesting because you can do them for a long time. If you do a right. body layout on a person, maybe it's an hour. But if you want to continue to have these stone energies work with the energies of the person, you can do it on their photograph and it can go on and on. So this is good for all kinds of therapeutic intentions and awakening intentions. Yes. Uh, so that's, that's um, right where I'm speaking to you from. There's a young woman in the next room who's helping out in our office and she was having a uh, black mold allergy problems and was very exhausted. And I did a layout for her on her photograph that was mostly mold dividing. There's actually a picture of it in my book. Um, that's my friend, Amber. And she got huge relief from the fatigue by the energizing effects that Moldavite apparently had on her through her photograph. Wow. So you can do this. Now, the thing I say when I encourage people to do this is do not do it without permission from the person you're working on. This isn't something we can use to um, transform our political figures or, <laughs> or our relatives without their consent. But if you have their consent, then you're imagining together and your intentions are joined. And that's why it'll work. Yes. Um, yeah. So that's just another little caution I want to add. But you can also do it for animals, places, um, you know, gardens, things like that. And in that case, you go inward to ask for the intention and you make your best effort to feel whether you're getting a yes. And you go with that. Lots of possibilities there. That's exciting, isn't it? Yeah. And yeah, you don't need all the all the the quantity of stuff. And even if you have small stone chips, if you're only working with a small photograph, that's plenty, and you don't need the large st larger stones either. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, and it's true about moldavite as, as in ways that it isn't always true about other stones. You don't need a big piece. You need the piece that resonates with you, and it doesn't matter what size it is. And, you know, in that situation, a piece that weighs one gram can be just as strong as one that weighs 30 grams. And it would be a possibly challenging to figure out which piece would resonate for you if you're trying to order it online. So how do you help your clients with that? Because I know you do online and mail order as well through your business, right? Yeah, definitely. Um, the staff we have at my company, which is, I'll say my, my website name, it's heavenandearthjewelry.com. So that's all spelled out as one word. Um, at, at, that, at our office, everybody's trained to work intuitively with their customer um, to help them choose a stone. And you, know, you can very much do that. I mean, it, in, a, in a crystal shop, usually the people that work there are able to help people do that. It's the same way as long as people have that uh, sensitivity and have that intention and our people always do. So, you know, that's, that's one way you can be sure is if you go to a, a company that works that way. Perfect. Thank you. I just want to touch briefly on a couple of, I know they're big topics, so I'm not sure how you want to handle it, but you write about the connection between Moldavite and the Holy Grail, the Emerald Tablet. You, you've you dived into some really interesting topics around Moldavite, and you talk about those in your book. What would you like to share that can give people an idea of what they'll get in the book around those subjects? Well, that, that's great. Thank you for that opportunity. Um, regarding the Holy Grail, <clears throat> this was actually written about way back in that 1958 article that I read that I talked about earlier. Um, George Bruce, the man who wrote that article, mentioned um, that um, uh, Nicholas Rorick, who was an artist and peace activist in the early part of the 20th century, 
um, believe that Moldavite was uh, the stone of Shambhala and also the same stone contained in the Holy Grail. So the stone of Shambhala was a wish fulfilling jewel. We won't go into that, but the Holy Grail um, story corroborates in a way what um, Rorik believed because in the story of the Grail as written by Wolfram von Eschenbach uh, in the ninth century, um, Moldavite, or I should say the stone of the Grail, the Grail was not a chalice, it was a stone. And it was said to be an emerald that fell from the sky. Um, so that is a very good uh, description of what Moldavite appears to be. It's green, it's extraterrestrial, and you know it definitely fell. And it fell in the same part of the world where the legends of the Grail originated. The Grail legends are believed to be Celtic, and I always associated that with Great Britain, but actually the Celts began in the Czech Republic and they moved to Britain, they migrated to Britain. So it even fits the Grail story in that way. Also, the Grail was um, believed to be something that set people on their spiritual journey. If you beheld the Grail, you couldn't marry the wrong person, you couldn't deviate from your path of destiny, even if you tried. Every path funneled, back, funneled you back into your destiny. Um, which is very much what Moldavite has done for me and many other people. So there is also that idea that the stone of the grail gave nourishment of the kind the person most needed. And in the, in, in the legend, it went around the round table and nourished each of the knights of the round table um, at the Pentecostal feast and gave them what was most necessary for their highest good. Again, this is a good metaphor for how Moldavite works. Um, and so there are things like that that connect it to that Grail legend. And I actually even got so enamored of that that I had a chalice made, a ceramic chalice made that has Moldavites embedded in it. So I put those two images together wow. and we drink from that sometimes, have a ritual. Um, but the other side of it, I'll mention the Emerald Tablet. Um, the Emerald Tablet of Alchemy, <clears throat> well, it's once again, Emerald, once again, from the sky, and in the Emerald Tablet was said to be engraved the wisdom of uh, Hermes Trismegistus, who was the uh, deity that was the originator of alchemy, alchemy being the science of spiritual transformation from the state of being uh, imperfect, i.e. lead, to perfect and illuminated, i.e. gold. Those were the symbols they used in alchemy. Um, so I think that alchemy and the grail legend weave together very closely and are really two different expressions of the same imagination or the same uh, perceived set of realities. Wow, you did that so well. I want to give people a quick <laughs> glance at just how beautiful. Would you hold up a couple more? You shared with me before we even started some of your Moldavite. I'd love for you to share it now. Okay, sure. Um, this one is is been around a long time. This is a Moldavite wow. nugget that I made for myself back around 1988. And it, this is my most powerful tool to wear when I'm doing meditation. It's very, very energizing. I've also used it for a long time to demonstrate to people that Moldavite's energy is really there because there's so much of it and it circles your heart that even people who don't think they feel crystal energies have often felt that. And those moments really excite me when I see that aha moment dawning where they get it for the first time. Yeah. So that's one of my pieces. Um, this is another necklace. This is made um a yeah. gem it's been cut and faceted so um this one i can only wear for a few minutes because it's so powerful um yeah. but i like having it uh, and then um i've got a couple of little tools this is a crystal crystal lemurian point that nice. i've attached three pieces of mold by two and the idea there is to direct the energy through a focal point and the crystal is a great uh, conduit for that and a bit of a magnifier. So there you can use it on chakras. 
Um, you can do it on a, put it on a body layout to emphasize an area. And like where I put it on my chest, it brings the energy up and down my central channel. Um, so that's what we want to do. Yeah. Um, and then there's another tool I made that's a, a pyramid, a quartz pyramid with moldavite attached. Very nice. And this is very much like its intention is similar in that you can focus energy through the point or you can place this flat side of the pyramid like on the heart is a great place for that. And it, it brings a huge amount of energy in there. You know, I've always believed if it's worth doing, it's worth overdoing. So <laughs> I have a man after my own heart. Yeah, I'm just imagining the energy work that I do and the sound therapy I do with like one of those directional devices with the Moldavite. I work with the crystals a lot. I even have one right here. I, I almost always have them around me, but to have a couple of pieces of Moldavite on there would really amplify that. I thought I'd share just a, a couple of the pictures that are in this book are amazing. It was very professionally done. You can feel the energy from this Moldavite when you're looking at it. I just, I can't recommend it enough to people that want to experience Moldavite for themselves. Oh, thank you, Cheryl. I, that, I did most of the photographs in there myself of the Moldavite pieces. Um, and, and those really big ones you were just showing, they came from a place in the Czech Republic called the Moldavite Museum. Um, where some of the biggest and best pieces ever found can be viewed by people. So if you get people get over there to Chesky Krumlov, uh, it's worth a trip. I can't even imagine what it feels like to walk into that much Moldavite. That's got to be almost overwhelming for sensitive people. <laughs> well, they, they like, you know, I, I used to try to be a sensitive person before I was, as you know. <laughs> and one of the things I did back in the day was I had a flotation tank in my basement so one of those meditation chambers and I would put like five kilos of moldavite on the bottom of the tank and then float over it. Wow. Um, I was hardcore. Still <laughs> <in my> <laughs> Well, I promised I would not keep you any longer than to just go over your book. Was there anything else in your book that you, you touched on a lot of things in your book. Is there anything I haven't mentioned that you'd like to mention briefly that people can look for in your book as well? Well, I think the, the thing I would point to in the, in the effects of Moldavite, because people want to know, what is this going to do for me? Yes. And I would say that Moldavite accelerates your spiritual growth, amplifies your energy field, um, discharges what you need to let go of, and attracts what you need to bring in. Um, and so those are things that, that everybody can benefit from. Um, and even though I mentioned it at the end, I'd like to stress that um, because it's a real blessing. It's part of the shift of consciousness that is going to be enveloping all of humanity, in my view. And it is the transformation of the world so that heaven and earth become one. That's the reason we named our business Heaven and Earth, because Kathy and I have held that as our intention this whole time. Um, but I feel it happening, and I think Moldavite is a great ally on that path. I agree. And I love that you talk about it in the book as well. We can't get attached to what that looks like. We may think we know what we want our ascension to look like, but what often happens is when we, get a, when we connect with an accelerator like this and an amplifier like this, all hell breaks loose, <laughs> if you will. And it's like, oh, wow, what's the matter? This is going the wrong way. I thought this was going to bring me all this. We have to clear it to really, we have to release it. And then, then the good stuff. So if it starts to get really messy, it's probably working. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, and you know, I like to think that all heaven is breaking loose. Yes. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. Well, do you have a parting thought that you'd like to leave us, us with today? Uh, yeah, but I'm going to say one last thing. Moldavite went first to my heart. And that's the place that opened. And that's the center of where we can all open from. That's where the spark of divinity is in each one of us. That's where we can, we can live our divinity from. Um, so to bring our attention there, to ask our heart, what do I do now in each moment? To meet everybody else from the heart um, and to and let the heart's truth speak through us all the time. That's true no matter whether we use Moldavite or not. 
And that would be my parting thought and my hope for everybody. That's beautiful. And I'm sorry that your wife couldn't join us, but please give Kathy our best. Tell her we missed her on the show. Maybe she can come on and do a show sometime. And thank you for your time. Give us your website address one more time, please. Okay. Yeah. It's heaven and earth, all spelled out heaven and earth jewelry. Again, all is one word.com. Perfect. Thank you. And again, the book is the book of Moldavite. We've been visiting with Robert Simmons and we, Appreciate you joining us. Please let us know what you thought of the show. Leave your comments and we will get back with you on those. And join us next time for another episode of Exploring Possibilities.